We're here to talk about Cycling Plus's 2017 Bike of the Year, which, as you probably already know, is Specialized's Roubaix Comp. It's a really interesting bike, and we think it might actually be quite a controversial choice. I've got senior tech editor Warren Rossiter here with me today. I gave him the formal introduction. So, Was, let's start off with the Specialized Roubaix. Why is it one? What's so good about it? Uh, it's the way it mixes just a really light, lively ride and handling with probably the best levels of comfort we've yet seen on any road bike. And comfort shouldn't be considered anything as something boring. What the comfort this bike gives you is actually control. So the fact that it can cope with surfaces so well, poor surfaces really well, um, it just makes you quicker. It, it means you can just push that little bit harder, you've got that much more confidence in the bike. So that comfort is actually probably part of, of the controversy because it comes from uh, essentially suspension. So suspension on a road bike is at the front of the, the Roubaix. That's not actually anything new, but it does seem to really annoy people. I think there's, there's a lot of misconception about the, if you want to call it suspension, on the front end of the Roubaix. There are other bikes out there that do a similar job. The Damani, you know, the new Damani SL, which is also in this year's Bike of the Year, and again, it's a brilliant bike. But I think the biggest controversy with the, what Specialized is now calling the Future Shock, is people think, oh, it's all been done before, but it's not the way that they've done it. It's fundamentally different to, say, Cannondale's Head Shock or the old um, RockShox Ruby. Both of those work in a traditional kind of mountain bike way. So the suspension is actually below the head tube. And whilst that works brilliantly on mountain bikes where you're dealing with much slacker angles, on a road bike, what that actually means is the front end dives. But you know, the clever thing that the engineers at Specialized have done is they've moved that shock unit above the head tube. So it's effectively, you know, it's a cartridge that inserts into the top of the steerer and it suspends the bar. So all it's really suspending is you. Specialized did lots and lots of investigation on where to place that shock and they did so many prototypes of, of how to, to get that. Um, and they found that irrespective of rider weight, you basically put the same amount of weight over the handlebars when you're riding normally. And that's whether you're a 60 kilo rider or 120 kilo mm. rider. It's around about the same number, which I can't remember off the top of my head. So all they needed to do to make it active, but to resist bobbing, was make sure the spring rate that was inside that could cope with that amount of minimum right. weight. So when you get on the bike, the shock does settle. It does sit a little. So people level lots of criticisms at the, at the Roubaix when they're looking at it yeah. standing still with nobody on it. And that's because that shock is at full extension. The minute you get on it, it sinks and mm. it looks normal. You actually look at the geometry of that bike, it's more aggressive than the old Roubaix. It's interesting what you're saying about how it looks when it's at rest, I guess. Even, even our very own uh, Ben Delaney, he referred to it looking a little bit like a, a giraffe in a turtleneck. I don't know, I'm trying to picture that in my head and it's quite a nice looking thing actually. So f I can see why people would look at the, the Roubaix from the side and think, hey, it looks really tall, that's going to be a s almost, almost like a sit up and beg thing. And well, yeah, but that's, you know, as, as you're saying, you know, at rest. But the, the proof really is in the riding. And, you know, the other controversial thing about that front end is that more often than not, it's combined with specialised own hover bar. Mm. So they keep the, their head tubes low, the stack, you know, the stack height relatively low, but then to adjust it to fit different people, they offer a standard road bar with different rises. Mm. So when you combine that rubber covered Future Shock with the hover bar, which does this, all yeah. of a sudden it does look tall. Mm. But if you buy the Roubaix in the proper way, you go to your specialised dealer, you get fitted. If you're a sort of rider that rides low and long, they won't put you on a hover bar, they'll put mm. you on a flat bar. Look at the, the, the pros that have been you know, testing it and riding it. Because I think that's what, I'd, I'd imagine that's what people are worrying about, is yeah. that I'm not going to be able to get it low. You know, r racing types like me, you know, <laughs> with really flexible backs. Yeah, I mean, the, you know, the, the, the front end, it's the shock of the new, isn't it? It's something different, but that front end is adaptable. You can also, you can alter the spring rate. It comes with mm. three different springs. It comes with two different top caps. So you can have the low or you can have the tall. I mean, it's tall configuration, it's exactly the same geometry as the old Roubaix. In its low configuration, it's much more in line with the tarmac. What's been clever with is some of the things that are under the skin on that front end. Say, comparing it to, say, the Damani or the Focus Paralane or BMC's Road Machine, are all very similar objectives about those bikes. All the other bikes rely on um, the complexity of the carbon weave in that fork mm. because they rely on splay. They rely on the fork moving fore and aft, but not being able to twist. We're specialised because they've gone with that Future Shock system. The fork that's on the Roubaix is the lightest, stiffest road fork they've ever mm. made. So the front end is tight and accurate and precise 
yet has the same comfort that its competitors do. But I can take um, people not being enamoured with the way it looks. There have been plenty of bikes that don't exactly set your heart rate mm. when you actually look at them. So something we might get pulled up on with, with this year's Bike of the Year is, is I suppose, value for money. The, the Roubaix is, of the bikes we tested, it's one of the most expensive. So is a specialised good value for money, I guess? Yeah, yeah. Up front, which is the big innovation on that bike, the shock unit is the same on the S-Works model. In fact, it's the same fork as you get on the S-Works model. The frame is slightly different, but it's pro-level frame mm -hmm. as well. And they have built that bike up with some really, really nice kit. You know, Ultegra's great, yeah. they're really nice brakes. Praxis chainset is a chainset that's one test in Cycling Plus. Now, of course, there are some, some bikes that, that it's up against, you know, some of the direct sales um, versions. But whereas uh, lots of years we have centered a lot more on value, mm. this year, you know, it's been one of those years for great, great innovation. And my, my thoughts on spec are that, yep, Dura Race is the ultimate, but Ultegra will do exactly the same job for a slight weight penalty. 105 will do exactly the same job for a slight weight penalty. And these are all things that wear out. Mm. The one thing that shouldn't wear out is the frame. So buy the best frame you can, everything else is gonna really need, need replacing at some point. And, you know, when it boiled down to it, the Specialized was the finest riding bike amongst the group. But it is, uh, uh, you know, above and above everything else, it is a proper road bike. Because I think that's something that yeah. maybe worries people is that road bikes are moving away from being road bikes, and they're being they're becoming bikes that you can take off road, uh, and actually sort of losing sight of what what we buy road bikes for. Do you think that yeah. that's an un again unfair? I think that's unfair. Yeah, yeah. You know, the latest research and tested has shown that that we're seeing more and more that that bigger volume tires on wider set rims have less rolling resistance than a narrow tire. Mm. So they're just, they're, they're quick, but you've got the comfort element. And, you know, the move to disc brakes has freed up a lot of design and a lot of things. Whether you like disc brakes or not, there are certain advantages with going to discs, aside from the actual, you know, mechanics mm. of using them. Because you're freeing up so much more space in the frame, it's enabling people to run wider rims, to run bigger volume tires. And that creates an expansion to road bikes. It's not creating another genre, you know, we've got gravel, we've got cross, you've got adventure, whatever else. Mm. But road bikes are road bikes. It's just, they're gaining comfort yeah. and they're not losing speed. Take something like the BMC road machine that, that's in this roundup. That is an out and out, proper, proper racing machine. Mm. Yet, stock, it comes with 28 mil tires. Right, and <laughs> we shouldn't be scared of new tech. No. And, no. The, and the Specialized Roubaix is a really good bike. Yes, it pushes the envelope on that style of bike. If you're the sort of rider that favours super flyweight, weight weenie style climbing bike, then no, that's probably not for you, but it never would have been. And I think when companies like Specialized, like Trek have done so brilliantly on the Damani, like Focus have done brilliantly with the Paralane, or BMC have done with the Road Machine, when they're taking that base road and expanding it a little bit, it's giving you a lot more bike for your money. Mm. And, you know, I think that should be, uh, be applauded. Yeah. Okay. Well, there you go. That's why Warren loves the Specialized Roubaix. That's why it's our bike of the year. I'm not going to disagree with him. You might do. If you do, do it in the comments down below. But be nice. <laughs>